Hello and welcome to Active Bryant Fitness Systems. I'm Scott Bryant, personal trainer and master Paul Czech practitioner in London. And this video is all about adrenal fatigue today and many, many fitness enthusiasts and fitness professionals suffer with adrenal fatigue and many of them don't know why they're always tired and can't get their energy levels up even though they're working with multiple clients doing online training and wondering why they're getting stressed gaining fat and gaining pain in the body so in this video uh, adrenal fatigue fitness burnout what are the causes I'm going to go over the causes, the treatments, the tests, the exercises, the supplements, and I will show you some quick exercises that you can do if you're suffering from adrenal fatigue. Now, adrenal fatigue in the medical literature is uh, not counted by many national health doctors or normal doctors. But if you was to see an holistic doctor, they will probably recognise it. And a surgeon friend of mine uh, from Harley Street definitely recognises it. He's seen it in many of his uh, clients. So I studied functional diagnostic nutrition with uh, Reed Davis. What date was that? I passed uh, 2012. But before that, uh, Paul Check of the Czech Institute was educating his students in 2003 about adrenal fatigue and Charles Parlequin, strength and conditioning coach to 250 athletes in 200 different sports, recognised adrenal fatigue as well. Now, it's really sad that the national health or normal doctors, I'm just having my matcha tea, don't recognise adrenal fatigue. And if you Google it, it says that it's not really a diagnosed uh, condition. Now, from Reed Davis's uh, program that took me over a year to get the qualification in, uh, there's lots of lab work that I've learned how to do to undercover adrenal fatigue and look at the signs and the symptoms of adrenal fatigue and then use uh, lab work and supplementation and diet and exercise in helping you to overcome adrenal fatigue. OK, let's get into it. So the causes of adrenal fatigue can be program design. So I walk around many gyms around the UK and, uh, and abroad. And I would say 98% of people don't even have a fitness program that is documented. It might be documented on their phone, which they spend too much time looking at than rather training. Uh, but they don't have a, a hard copy of it. And they're not sticking to it. I'd say 85% of people say, oh, it's in my head, my program, and I'm doing the same thing week in, week out. So you're going to get the same response, which is no response. Does that make sense? Unless you have periodization in your program, rep sets, loads and tempos. And of course, the right sort of exercise for your uh, dreams and goals in your fitness program. So the causes can be overtraining. The next one could be uh, inverted breathing patterns, high blood pressure, constant eating the same foods, which will give you food allergies and stress inside the body. Hormonal disfluctuation. So you may be an aging woman going through postmenopause, or you may be a woman that's just had a baby and the baby's caused huge amounts of stress and this is causing the adrenal fatigue inside the body because you're trying to look after baby you can't sleep and you're not exercising correctly in a balanced way in my opinion so it can cause depression it can cause anxiety it can cause uh, weight gain around the midsection or if you're training like five six days a week and you're not dropping in body fat or you're not gaining muscle mass this could be why, because you're in adrenal overload or adrenal fatigue. Now, the adrenals are based on top of the kidneys and they're like uh, square shaped and they push out all the major hormones in the body. So if you're a male and you're trying to get stronger and you're trying to gain more muscle, if you're in adrenal fatigue, it won't happen. 
Does that make sense? And I found that people that have lower back pain, neck pain, it may be a structural issue, but on top of that, it can be an adrenal issue where they're way too tired to do CrossFit or HIIT training or any type of power training. Does that make sense? So I bring the program back and some of my clients have come to see me. They've had 25, 30 exercises given to them by their physio. And that just tells me that the physio doesn't understand adrenal fatigue or he didn't learn about it at university doing his three year study program. Remember, a doctor does six years. A Czech practitioner at level five, my level, does five years of constant study in constant uh, case histories, constant assessments and lab work. And this isn't this isn't a qualification by Paul Czech. This is a uh, qualification by another company that I found to work really well with clients. So it can cause depression, it can cause weight gain, it can cause stress and anxiety, it can cause irregular sleep patterns, it can cause Addison's disease if you get into stage three, it can cause uh, unexplained mood swings. It can cause unexplained reasons why you get a knee ache or a back ache or uh, you're just not feeling 100%. Or you may find that you're getting to your training, you're doing really well, and then you come down with a cold. Or you start getting depressed or you can't start sabotaging your exercise program and not getting the result that you're really looking for. Does that make sense? So the tests you can do, you can do cortisol testing and you can do uh, obviously, obviously adrenal function testing. But normally when the adrenals are out of balance, there'll be something going on in your nutrition, your lifestyle, as well as your exercise. So there needs to be an holistic approach. You can't just do one lab test and it says you're in adrenal fatigue and that's it and take a load of supplements that won't work. If you don't change the diet, you won't get out of adrenal fatigue. If you don't change the exercise, you won't get out of adrenal fatigue. If you don't rebalance your lifestyle, let's say you're training six days a week, you go to bed at 12 o'clock or one o'clock in the morning, this will keep you in adrenal fatigue no matter what supplements you take. So it's all an holistic approach that I use with all my clients, with all the types of training uh, exercise that I give my clients. So I work with golfers, tennis players, pregnant mums, uh, pop stars, movie stars. Uh, I've worked with a lot of photographers, you know, because photographers are crouched out on their camera for long durations of time, click, click, click. Uh, I've worked with people in chronic lower back pain. I've worked with uh, rugby players. I've worked with an American football coach. So I've worked with many different types of people and helped them recover and get the dream of their fitness dream, whether it is to have a six pack or whether it is to bench press more or whether it is you just wanna live a longer life, much healthier and stress and pain free. Well, a stress thing, stress free thing is quite hard, isn't it? With modern day life and what's going on in the media and stuff like that. So my light keeps going off, so I've got to put another light on. There we go, that's better. Uh, so testing is really, really important. If you read the book, uh, Adrenal Fatigue in the 21st Century, uh, Stress Syndrome there, it's an absolute excellent book. Really going in depth, and there's some low tech testing that you could do, like shining a light in your eye, that will tell you whether you're in adrenal fatigue. And I learn another test from the Institute called Sergeant's Line, where we do a special line on the body and we time it to see how quickly it goes away. And the longer the line stays on the body, the longer the more you're in adrenal fatigue. Uh, so in the book, you'll learn about what it is and how you can recover energy resistance, immune resistance, a vitality and in enjoyment of life by James L. Wilcott, MD, DC and PhD, David, my mate who doesn't believe in adrenal fatigue. Uh, 
So it's really, really important that when in adrenal fatigue, diet is really important. So I use the metabolic typing diet. I use it on myself and I've been using it with clients for over 20 years. And it's got over 40 years of research of uh, people that are chronically sick, chronically ill, using the metabolic typing diet to get out of pain and to rebalance their hormonal system. So with the metabolic typing diet, there is three different types of diet. There's a carb type, mixed type and protein type. If you like me, square, short, 5'11", with really broad shoulders, then you will probably be uh, a protein type. So you're more sympathetic dominant, which means if I queue up for food and I don't get my food quickly, I get quite angry. Uh, parasympathetic dominant people are normally taller than me, leaner than me, and they're very relaxed, like my mate Robin. The, the, you can't wind him up. You just can't wind the guy up, which is which is great for him. So, and then you've got the mixed type where you're a mixture of the two types of nervous system. And this is the only diet that really looks at your ethnic racial background as well as looks at... Uh, you know, your hormonal type and the nervous system. So sympathetic to parasympathetic sides of the nervous system, which is really important to get this into balance for your type. And this is why the diet always works, in my opinion. It's never not worked with my clients. So when it comes to testing, you can do saliva or you can do blood. It depends on who you're seeing. If you see an endocrinologist, they'll probably do blood tests. Now, with me, I do blood and urine because there's many different elements of the adrenals that you need to know about. And when it comes to a diet, so obviously eating according to metabolic type is highly advisable. So if you're eating a paleo diet and you're a carb type, you'll just be eating meat and not enough vegetables to get your carbohydrates from. So you'll be out of balance. Does that make sense? And the same as if you do the Atkins diet and you're a protein type like me, it will work. But if you're a carb or a mixed type, it won't work. Does that make sense? So by getting, you know, comprehensive lab testing and dietary testing, we can make sure that we get you the 100% the best result for your body. So diet is really important, I would say, an organic diet because uh, organic food is 70% better for you than non-organic food. Yeah, organic food is expensive. It's getting harder and harder to get hold of. Uh, but if you get an organic carrot or a normal carrot, put it on the side, look at it in a week's time, and you will see that the organic carrot is still perfect, but the the carrot that's not organic, it will denature and go mouldy and green and you'll have to throw it away. And this is the same with the eggs, the quality of the eggs, the quality of the meat is much, much higher when you're eating these grades of food. OK. So next, which is really important with adrenal fatigue is keeping your body hydrated. So 0 0.33 times your body weight in ounces of water a day that you need and add a little pinch of sea salt and this will stop you urinating and help you put minerals back into the body as well. So we get mineral and vitamin depleted, the more movement and the more stressed out the body gets. So magnesium is a good supplement to take and uh, fish oils are a great supplement as well. I highly recommend them to all my clients. And uh, Royal Power is really good for the body. Shilajit is really good for the body. I'm not going to tell you exactly what you need to take because everyone is individual and I need to do testing to find out exactly what your body needs. But you could try these certain supplements to see if they work for you, you know. So when it comes to exercise, exercise is like a drug. You take the wrong drug, you get the wrong high. So LSD is not the same as taking cocaine and cocaine is not the same as taking ecstasy. Does that make sense? So when it comes to exercise, CrossFit 
is not the same as HIIT. And HIIT is not the same as power training. And uh, aerobic running on a treadmill is not the same as rowing. So if you're doing high velocity exercise that put the body under huge amounts of stress and you've got an inverted breathing pattern so an inverted breathing pattern would be you're a chest breather and not a belly breather and as a master level five check practitioner i release the diaphragm and teach you how to breathe many trainers are teaching breathing but not releasing the diaphragm because they're not being taught it so that that's not really working. And the same when you go yoga, they're not taught this technique that I was taught in California, in which it's about to release the diaphragm and to help you overcome your inverted breathing pattern. Now, if you've got an inverted breathing pattern to overcome, it will take three to 5,000 exercises for you to change it. It's not going to happen just with me going, do this exercise 10 times a day and you need it to be released. And what I found with clients is that the more stress they've got, or they've got food allergies and stuff like that, the, the inverted breathing pattern will come back. And if the client doesn't practice it on a regular basis, it shuts down. So one of my clients, I've had to release him three times so far because of the inverted breathing and teaching him how to, to do it at the same time. So, so breathing is number one on the totem pole. Paul checks totem pole. So if your respiratory system is out of balance, the rest of the body will be out of a balance. And three, four and five, which are here, three, four and five of the, of the spine keeps the diaphragm alive. So if the diaphragm is not functioning properly, like as you breathe in, your belly should go out and your chest should rise. If this is out of balance, then this will be causing adrenal overload. So if you're running a 10K uh, marathon or you're doing HIIT or you're doing CrossFit or you're doing triathlon training, this could be the root cause of why you're either not reaching your goal of your times or maybe why you're getting lower back pain, knee pain and other problems. Does that make sense? So really, if you suspect that you're in adrenal fatigue, you should do Tai Chi, Qigong or yoga type movements, which are very low load, but they work the parasympathetic sides of the nervous system, which puts you into relax and healing mode and helps with the internal organs and rebalancing the internal organs, as well as will help you to energize the organs. So as a master level five check practitioner, I organ map the whole body. So I find out where the physiological load is highest in the body. So have you got a liver issue? I've got bilirubin in my liver, so I can't drink alcohol, or I can only drink a really midging about because it causes stress in my liver. Have you got a gallbladder issue? Have you got adrenal issue? Have you got a, a bowel issue? Have you got a descending colon issue? So when somebody fills out my holistic lifestyle coaching paperwork, which is about that much paper documents that you have to fill out that takes you 10 days, that enables me to pinpoint where these problem areas are. So is it adrenal? Is it kidney? Is it your eyes? Is it your uh, vascular system? Okay. And once I know where the highest load is, then I reduce what you're doing in which to get the body into recovery. Does that make sense? And with uh, Qigong or Tai Chi, it energizes these organs and works on the 12 meridians throughout the body. But with the uh, Czech zone exercises, they work on specifically on the organs as well as the chakras that you can't see. So, they, so here you've got the love chakra, which is green. You've got the communication chakra, which is blue. And then you've got your higher self, which is purple. And the base chakra is red. And what I found was, over 23 years, the clients 
with problems with their lower back, it's normally root chakra issues, as well as lower body issues. So it could be, uh, it could be a lower intestine issue, okay? Or it could be the prostate could be under stress, okay? So men have a prostate. And there they're saying that most men, when they reach late 60s, will get cancer in the prostate, but I wanna prove that wrong. Uh, because most men at that age won't be exercising, or if they are exercising, they're massively overdoing it, okay? So if you're a woman and you're training like a nutter in the gym, like a mad bird, and you're trying to lose weight, and you can't lose weight, but you're in the gym five days a week, and you're doing a silly diet, like your, uh, what could I say, uh, not the paleo diet, what's that other diet where you don't eat no meat whatsoever? Uh, a vegan diet. And you're wondering why you're in pain and the body's not changing, this will be why. Does that make sense? So the body needs branch chain amino acids that you really, you get a little bit from plants, but you get more from meat. So when people start doing a vegan type diet to get healthy and to get lean, they're really losing muscle mass losing bone mass and losing ligament and tendon thickness because of these diets are not good for you at all. Like the woman that done the fruit diet died and then another woman that done the vegan diet died, but you don't hear people dying of eating meat. Some people say it's linked to cancer, but we've all got cancer constantly in our body and normally cancer arises in my opinion when you're overly stressed and not doing the things that your body likes and body needs. Does that make sense? So when it comes to exercise, do some light Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, or even, dare I say it, Pilates. Uh, I don't like Pilates because unless you're a prostitute, how much work do you do laying on your back or on a machine? And if you look at old time Pilates, it was much more aggressive. They made it all all gentle and very pussified, in my opinion. And I've worked with a, a tennis player and he said, oh, he had great stability. He could do everything. And when I tried to get him to balance on a Swiss ball, he couldn't do it for diddly. And I work predominantly with the Swiss ball with my clients, as well as kettlebell, barbell, dumbbells, cable balls, uh, club bells in which to get my clients in shape and to get them through, you know, pain and postural issues by uh, rebalancing their whole body by using the Swiss ball. Now, Charles Parlequin said the, the Swiss ball only works for a couple of weeks. 